Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday morning if you're watching live. I'm Miss Rachel at the William Jeans Memorial Library and we are so happy to get to spend some time with you this morning for sensory story time. If you um, don't already have something that you can use as a shaker, you can grab that now because we'll do our shaker song a little later. And it doesn't have to be shaker eggs. It can be um, some keys or a rattle or some maracas or any kind of homemade shaker or it can even just be your hands. You always have those handy. Um, and something you can use for a scarf. I'm going to use my story time scarf but you can use anything at all. You could use a tissue, you could use an old t-shirt or a dish towel or a scarf that somebody likes to wear at your house. Anything at all you can use to, to wave around will work. We're gonna start, I have to let you know, I'm missing some of my little pictures. I don't even think you can see that because the glare. This is our song picture and some of my pictures are missing. So I had to fill in some other things to tell you what we're gonna do when. We'll start with our welcome song. We'll sing good morning to everyone. Then we're going to read this book here. Then we're going to sing another song. Then we'll read this book here. After that, we'll do our scarf song. And then after that, we'll do our shaker song. So you can see I put these things here so you know that's when we'll do those things. And then, of course, we'll do bubbles. So if you are watching live, um, Tuesday, March 23rd, uh, between 10 and 10.30. You can put your child's name in the comments if you'd like me to include their name in the welcome song. And um, if not, please know that if you're watching later, we're still happy that you're here. So welcome. We'll start by singing hello to everyone. Let me just make sure I can see what I'm doing here. Oops, I got lost. I think you're still seeing it. I hope so. All right, my friends. Let's all clap, cause Eva is here. Eva is here. Eva is here. Let's all clap, cause Eva is here. Eva is here today. Let's all clap, cause Lorenzo is here. Lorenzo is here. Lorenzo is here. Let's all clap, cause Lorenzo is here. Lorenzo is here today. Let's all clap, cause Casey is here. Casey is here. Casey is here. Let's all clap, cause Casey is here. Casey is here today. Let's all clap, cause Adian is here. Adian is here. Adian is here. Let's all clap, cause Adian is here. Adian is here today. Let's all clap, cause Amelia is here. Amelia is here. Amelia is here. Let's all clap, cause Amelia is here. Amelia is here today. Let's all clap, cause we're all here. We're all here. We're all here. Let's all clap, cause we're all here. We're all here today. We are very happy that you are here today, my friends. Thank you for joining us. We're going to read our first book, which is called Stuck in the Mud. Let's find out who is stuck in the mud. We had some rain last week, and we had some mud, and we've had some melting snow, and things have gotten muddy, so we know all about mud. Let's find out who is stuck in the mud in this story by Jane Clark, illustrated by Gary Parsons. And I'm going to have to move over here so you can see the pictures. I'll get a little closer to you, my friends. Um, this is published by Penguin Books. Stuck in the mud. says the rooster. Early in the morning, down on the farm, a new day was dawning, peaceful and calm. Now, here is the hen house. Look at the baby chicks. 
Let's count them and see if all 10 chicks are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> Where's number 10? The barn door burst open. Wake up, squawked the hen. I've counted my chicks and one's run off again. Help, help, clucked the hen. My poor little chick, he's stuck in the mud and the mud's deep and thick. Look, there's little chick number 10. I've pushed and I've pulled again and again. And now I'm stuck too, said the poor muddy hen. Cat heard the hen. Hold on, wait for me. It's perfectly easy. I'll soon pull you free. Cat pushed and she pulled again and again, but soon she was stuck with the poor muddy hen. So now we have the cat pulling the hen and the hen pulling the chick. Dog heard the cat. I'll help you, he yapped. Meow. So he jumped in the mud and he got his paws trapped. Dog pushed and he pulled again and again, but soon he was stuck with the cat and the hen. Sheep heard the dog, and without even thinking, she stepped in the mud and soon she was sinking. Sheep pushed and she pulled again and again, but poor sheep was stuck with dog, cat, and hen. <laughs> horse heard the sheep. Oh, nay, how unlucky. My horseshoes are sinking. My tail will get mucky. Horse pushed and he pulled again and again, but then he was stuck with sheep, dog, cat, and hen. What's this? said the farmer. Phew! This mud is smelly. And now mucky mud is all over my belly. He pushed and he pulled again and again. But the farmer was stuck with them all like the hen. Oh dear! said the chick. You all seem to be trapped. See, here's the little chick. Splat went the mud as his little wings flapped. It's time I got out. Whoa. And with a small plop, chick jumped off the mud with a skip and a hop. You pushed and you pulled again and again, but I'm not stuck now, and I wasn't stuck then. Well, look at that. The chick never was stuck, but everyone trying to help her got themselves stuck. Mud is great fun, I'm sure you'll agree. I love mucky mud. Thanks for playing with me.
What do you think? Was everyone else playing with the chick? Did they get in the mud to have fun and play with her? No, they were trying to get her out and she was just having a good time playing in the mud and she wasn't stuck at all. And the story doesn't tell us how everyone else got unstuck from the mud. So we have to use our imaginations and think about how maybe we think they got out. All right, my friends, now we are going to sing another song. And this is not about animals stuck in the mud, but it is about something that reminds me of spring. Mud is kind of something that happens in spring. Actually, this, these things that I'm gonna tell you about start growing in spring, but we can't pick them and eat them until summer when they're ripe. In case you didn't guess, I'm talking about berries. Yummy, delicious, fresh, juicy berries, all kinds of berries. They're just gonna start beginning to grow. And then when it gets a little bit warmer and they get ripe, we can pick them and wash them and eat them, but only the kinds that we know are safe because our grown up tells us they are safe to eat. So we're gonna sing a little song as we think about and get ready for all the wonderful, delicious treats that are in store for us at the beginning of this season. Um, we've done this a couple times in story time, so you might know this one, but if not, you can follow along. You'll get the hang of it really soon. All around the blueberry bush, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop go the berries. And when we say pop, you can curl yourself up into a little ball, pretend you're a berry, and then you can jump and pop open. If I do it, I will pop right off the screen and you won't see me. So you have to imagine that I'm curled up like a little juicy berry. And when I say pop, we do a big jump and throw our arms and legs open wide, okay? So we did blueberries, next let's do strawberries. All around the strawberry patch, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berry. Blueberries, strawberries, how about mulberries? Mulberries, yum. All around the mulberry tree, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Ready? Pop goes the berry. Let's see. Ooh, I know. Raspberries, delicious. All around the raspberry bush, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berries. Hmm, I know. Cranberries. Cranberries don't grow on a tree. They don't grow in a field. They don't grow on a bush. They grow in a bog. Lots of water it's, it needs for cranberries to grow. All around the cranberry bog, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berry. One more, I think. Blackberries. Mmm, blackberries. All around the blackberry bush, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berry. Let's do blueberry and strawberry one more time before we finish. And we'll do it a little bit faster. You ready? All around the blueberry bush, we pick some juicy berries. We take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berry. Did you keep up? That was pretty fast. All right, we'll do one more time strawberries and we'll do it fast. And with all the berries that we've done, you should be expert by now so you can keep up while we do it very fast. All around the strawberry patch, pick some juicy berries, take them home and wash them up. Pop goes the berries. Whoa, tricky, but you did pretty well. Good job, my friends. 
Now we're going to read another book. This one is about some more animals. Dog on a frog. Look at that cover. See the dog is trying to sit on the frog. Hmm, let's find out about this. This is by Kess and Claire Gray and Jim Field and published by Scholastic. Dog on a frog? Hey dog, get off the frog, said the frog. But I like sitting on frogs, said the dog. Frogs are all squishy and squashy, and when you sit on them, they go, Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
asked the dog. Oh, dragons will sit on wagons, said the frog. Dragons will sit on wagons, mice will sit on ice, kittens will sit on mittens, and puppies will sit on guppies. What will canaries sit on? asked the dog. Canaries will sit on fairies, said the frog. Possums will sit on blossoms. Hens will sit on pens, baboons will sit on balloons, and poodles will sit on noodles. <gasps> poodles aren't going to sit on noodles, gasped the dog. They are now, the frog smiled. Hold on, said the cat. If dogs sit on logs and cats sit on gnats, bears sit on chairs, no stairs, slugs sit on plugs, flies sit on pies, crickets sit on tickets, moths sit on cloths, leopards sit on shepherds, cheetahs on fajitas, news sit on canoes, pigs sit on wigs, boars sit on oars, whales sit on nails, dragons sit on wagons, mice sit on ice, kittens sit on mittens, puppies sit on guppies, canaries sit on fairies, possums sit on blossoms, hens sit on pens, baboons sit on balloons, and poodles sit on noodles. What are frogs going to sit on? asked the dog. Do you have any guesses? The dog's already sitting on the log, so the frog can't sit on a log. What is something that rhymes with frog that the frog can sit on? Maybe dogs? Nope. There's no frog on top of this dog. The dog is on the log. The cat is not happy sitting on a bunch of gnats. And look, the frog is sitting in a beach chair. Does that seem fair? All the other animals are sitting on something pretty uncomfortable or messy, and the frog is enjoying a beach chair. I don't know if any of the animals were happy with those arrangements except for the frog. Those animals might be changing the rules soon, I think. Here is George. He's going to sit over here while we get ready to do our scarf song. I have my story time scarf. What do you have? Do you have something you can use as a scarf? We are gonna pretend that our scarves are fish and they are gonna swim through the water. And in case you don't know how fish breathe, they get oxygen out of the water. They suck it in through their gills and then to let out the parts they don't need, bubbles come out of their mouth. That's why it looks like fish blow bubbles. So we are going to pretend first that our scarves are fish and then we're going to pretend that our scarves are bubbles going pop. You ready? One little fish is swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. One little fish is swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 bubble. Pop! Now, we're going to do two fish and two pops. Ready? Two little fish are swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Two little fish are swimming in the water, Bubble, 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 bubble. Pop! There's one. Pop! Two. One fish, two fish. Next comes three fish. Three little fish are swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Three little fish are swimming in the water. 
bubble, 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 bubble. Pop! There's one. Pop! Two! And... Pop! Three! Three fish, three bubble pops. You can put your scarf away because now it's finally time for the shaker song. I'm going to use my shaker eggs, and you can get out whatever you have. Maybe you have shaker eggs. Maybe you have a maraca or a rattle or something else. You can get that out so we can get ready to shake, shake, shake together. Ready? Got to make sure we get connected here. go. You're being very patient. We're ready. Shake it, shake it, everybody shake it. Shake it, shake it, everybody shake it. Shake it, shake it, everybody shake it. Come on and shake it with me. Shake it, shake it, shake it on your tummy. Shake it, shake it, shake it on your tummy. Shake it, shake it, shake it on your tummy. Come on and shake it with me. Come on, shake it up. Come on, shake it down. Come on, shake it all around. Shake it any way you want. Shake it, shake it, everybody shake it. Shake it, shake it, everybody shake it. join us here for Sensory Storytime on the computer, or maybe you can come to the outside of the library where we're going to have story time throughout the spring and summer outside. So if you um, haven't heard anything about that, make sure you follow our Facebook page and you can go to our website and you can see our calendar there. Um, also on our website you can sign up to receive the children's e-newsletters so you'll find out about when outdoor story times will be. They're not announced very far in advance because they're weather dependent so you have to be um, ready to join at, on short notice. I usually try to look at the weather on Sunday 
and um, post something Sunday or Monday for the week. Um, and we try to do some in the morning and some in the afternoons so that we can accommodate as many people as possible. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, we will still be here for virtual story time almost every Tuesday morning. Next Tuesday, I will not be doing story time. It's spring break. So I'm going to be hanging out with my own kiddos. And um, we will be back in the first week of April. So let's say goodbye for now with bubbles like we always do. There are bubbles in the air, in the air. There are bubbles in the air, in the air. There are bubbles in the air. There are bubbles everywhere. There are bubbles in the air, everywhere. There are bubbles way up high, way up high. There are bubbles way up high, way up high. There are bubbles way up high. There are bubbles in the sky. There are bubbles way up high in the sky. There are bubbles way down low, way down low. There are bubbles way down low, way down low. There are bubbles way down low. And they tickle on your toes. There are bubbles way down low on your toes. And the bubbles say goodbye. Say goodbye. And the bubbles say goodbye, say goodbye. And the bubbles say goodbye. Say goodbye until next time. And the bubbles say goodbye till next time. Goodbye, Bubbles, and goodbye to you, my friends. I hope I will see you again soon, and I hope you have a great couple of weeks. Bye-bye.